Today, I'm gonna walk you through every single project I built. The idea, the code, how I met my roommate through a hackathon, and even the job offer I ended up getting. Hackathons, that's where I thought you learned how to break into stuff. Not homes like I just did, but software. I thought it'd be like the movies. You'd be in some dark room, typing really fast, and SSHing into some remote environment. Hacking, that is, until I realized that what hacking is is not breaking into somebody's computer, but in this context, it's trying to create some really cool projects, some really cool hacks. Through my four years in college, I went from an absolute beginner to a pretty experienced hacker, and today, I'm gonna show you how to do the same. Let's get right into it with my first hackathon ever, one that holds a very special place in my heart. Hack Rice. It was at Rice University where I went to college, so there's some nostalgia, but also it was where I got the most comfortable swag. This t-shirt is like six, seven years old, and I still wear it to bed most nights. I was just a freshman, so I did not know what I was doing. My close friend invited me to join their group, and I said yes. We created this app called Sandals. I have no idea why we called it that, and I think we were basically trying to do what Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat stories did before they existed. It's a way for you to check in and update really close friends without sending a blast to your entire friend network. I didn't know any coding, and so they tasked me with creating the user profile aspect of the application, and I had no idea how to do that. So I remember sitting there for three hours, and then I produced these 10 lines of code, and I guess that's what they wanted from me. In hindsight, it was so easy, but it goes to show that even when you know nothing, you can still do something. I just remember early morning, the day the project was due for judging. At about 3 a.m., we all sat down with our computers and tried to integrate all our different code changes into the app, the final version. And we had merge conflicts. And we ignored the merge conflicts and just overwrote each other's code. And so we lost hundreds of lines of code. And we ended up staying the rest of the night or morning without sleeping to get something that worked. And then the same squad that did Hack Rice together went to University of Houston Code Red, where we created Sawano. Again, I have no idea how we came up with the names for these apps, but Sawano is still better than Sandals. It was basically a way for you to take an old smartphone, set it up somewhere in your apartment or kitchen, and have it continuously record. It would then send that feed to IBM Watson, which would run some models to analyze what it was seeing. And then I leave the house, maybe I left the stove on, and it notices that there's a fire. It'll then text me and be like, hey, you might want to come check this out. This was basically like one of those cameras you can get now for your apartment, some security camera, they'll basically notify you or alert you. Essentially, we were always ahead of our time. Imagine if we had productionized these. I would be so rich, so unbelievably rich. We actually ended up winning the IBM Watson prize, got some pretty sweet headphones, which I used up until last year when they finally broke. Then we went to our first hackathon out of state with travel, PenApps. The first and oldest student run college hackathon. At PenApps, we created Deaf Beats, which was a Raspberry Pi interface that allowed deaf people to visualize and feel music. It was actually really, really cool. The first time I'd done a hardware hack instead of just software. This was something you could actually feel with your hands. There was a circuit, a Raspberry Pi, a Python program to actually identify and analyze the sound frequencies, and then also some 3D printing to actually create a cage that you could actually strap on your body so a deaf person can put it and then go to a concert or go dancing and feel immersed in sound. Overall, it was an incredible experience. I had a lot of fun, but there's one memory that definitely sticks out. About halfway through, we realized we needed an adapter to connect our mic, which would take in the sound frequencies into the Raspberry Pi, where our Python program lived. There was no time to order it from anything like Amazon, and so we ended up finding a Radio Shack, I know, they're still in business, that was about a mile away in downtown. And so one of us took the actual subway to get to the Radio Shack, buy the adapter, and then finish our project. It was crazy. And then we were back in Texas, Austin to be specific, for MLH Prime Southwest Regional. We traveled by bus and then we created Mars Vars, a VR simulator for astronauts. Basically, if you're on the ground here training for harsh climates like the moon or Mars, 
you need to be ready for sandstorms and blizzards and whatnot. And there's only so many places out here you can go do that in real life. So essentially you'd put on this headset and then be in an environment, like a virtual environment where you could practice skills and whatnot. The one really cool thing was we had this computer interface where anybody on command could type something in like sandstorm. And then in real time, you would see that happen in your headset. So it's basically preparing you for the unexpected. I will say, and don't tell the judges this, was everything was powered through AWS. So basically you would type a word on the website and then it would get sent to AWS and then Blender or Unity, whichever program we use, would pull it from AWS and be like, wait, Sandstorm, okay. Present Sandstorm effect for, for the astronaut. However, I never figured out how to actually get it from AWS. I got the uploading, so it showed up there. I went to my console and I could see it. But for some reason they could never get it. And so we had to hard code that last kind of bit through a button on my computer, which no one saw. We actually ended up placing top seven, which was kind of a big deal because the entire South was represented in this region. So top seven out of like 60, 65, 70 teams was pretty cool. And then back to HackerX, where four of us created Beats.me. The names got better as we got older, you know? Something to be said about that. Beats.me was a way for you to understand and analyze your music taste using the Spotify API, which would give you metrics for each song and album, stuff like energy, danceability, tempo. We would analyze that and then show you in some graphical way kind of what your music tastes were. So the idea was when someone said, hey, what type of music do you like? Instead of being like, I like hip hop or I like fast grungy music, you could be like, hey, let me just log into Beats.me and share this picture with you and you can kind of see all the circles of stuff and then you can share your circles and we can put them together. And We didn't end up winning any of the company or category or track prizes, but they kind of created a prize just for us. Basically, a bunch of the alumni of Hack Rice that were there, kind of the original OG organizers, they came together and they were like, we really like your project. We're gonna create a prize just for you called the Alumni Track Prize. So they basically gave us cash, that was, that was the award. And then Wasim, who's like, I mean, he was like the dude, the computer science dude on campus. He organized the first ever Hack Rice. He was, he was kind of a living legend. He personally sent us a bunch of Facebook swag and said if we were ever in Seattle, he'd give us a one-on-one -on -one tour of the office and refer us for any intern or full-time opening. And if you're new to programming and wanna learn, dedicate a whole hackathon to doing just that. Look up a YouTube course or tutorial or even better, try Udemy. You can filter by ratings, level, and topic. And because it's a hackathon, the most important thing is doing building something in 24 to 48 hours that you can hopefully demo to judges. So I'd recommend looking for courses with coding exercises where you're at the intersection of theory and application. Start off with some free intro courses and then make your way to some of the more comprehensive paid ones. Also, don't be afraid to jump around. Sometimes a project might bore you or be too easy, so skip ahead. The best thing is even after the hackathon ends, you'll have lifetime access to the course so you can revisit material and continue building cool stuff. Udemy constantly has sales, so look out for those and feel free to check out some of my favorite courses in the description below. And then I flew to Chicago. All expenses paid, thanks to JP Morgan for Code for Good. I think there was like three charity partners that, that were there and we could pick any one of them for a project that would help them in a certain way. And so I'm gonna be very honest, I forget what we built. I just remember having the best 24 hours. They basically gave us the entire Chicago experience, popcorn and deep dish pizza and literally unlimited candy. So I just ate a lot. I met some really cool people, but because we actually placed in this final event out of all the teams, we were top 10 or top five or whatever, JP Morgan's recruiter actually contacted me a couple weeks later, just called me out of the blue and was like, are you interested in an internship? And I was like, yes, I, I am interested. So, so what's the process? And she was like, there is no process. You, you came all the way to Chicago, you worked on a project, it was good, it did something, you presented it, we liked it, you placed out of all these teams, you've kind of, that, that was the interview process. You've shown us that you can do it. And so they just sent me a job offer right after that call. And so that goes to show you that 
if nothing, hackathons are a great way to learn something new, build up your portfolio, but also network with really cool companies in the space. And then we were back in Philadelphia for Pen Apps once again. This time we worked on Beats.us. Get it? Beats.me and then Beats.us. It was a way for you to auto-generate collaborative playlists on Spotify. Imagine you're going on a road trip with your closest friends and you wanted to have a playlist for your journey together. You'd add all your friends and then we would go ahead and analyze all of your music tastes and populate the playlist with 15 to 20 songs we think you'd all enjoy. And then you can go ahead and add, delete, edit songs. Spotify actually allows you to do this now, so we were once again way ahead of our time. And there's something else I want to share with you too, how I met my roommate. So let me go get him, one sec. Please take a seat. I have some, I have some questions to ask you. Um, so I actually met Shashank for the first time sometime freshman year of college, but I feel like I didn't really get close to him until Pen Apps beats out us. So I just, I just wanna, for, for the record, Shashank, why do you think we didn't win a prize at, 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 at Pen Apps for beats out us? Okay, so first of all, three of us went to this mm -hmm. uh, hackathon. The first person to disappear was this guy right here. Okay. So I'm here by myself, writing the only component that worked. Wait, wait, no, no, wait, sorry, for the record. So the only thing that didn't work on this app was the some machine learning model that, that you were tasked with, right? No, that is false. Your no, service, you made the wrong API call. Your service my said service, that my service was the it just only, went down and then it didn't send back. No, it was the only thing that worked. The thing that was down was the front end that you didn't build because you weren't there. And last but not least, we had the Rice Datathon, which is kind of like a hackathon, but you work on data-related projects, usually big data. So a bunch of companies come, they give you their data sets, and they're like, hey, give us some insights. And so we worked with Chevron on ChevPred, which again, I don't really know what we did, so I'm just gonna show you a bunch of code. We ran some machine learning, this and that, and supervised, unsupervised, whatever. And they liked it, and we won a prize. I forget what it was. and. There you have it, every single hackathon project I ever worked on. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, hackathons are cool, I wanna get involved. And the best way is just to keep your eyes and ears open. Go to mlh.com for sure, look through all the different hackathons, see if there are any remote virtual ones, or if there are any in your area, or even close by that you can travel to that might have scholarships and stipends. Otherwise, check with your university, local organizations, companies, and maybe you can organize your own hackathon which would be pretty dope. And remember, the best way to learn coding, the best way to get better at coding at software engineering is just by doing, by writing more code, playing around with technologies and being uncomfortable. And so I'd highly encourage you to go out there, give it a shot. Either way, keep me updated, keep me posted, keep building cool stuff. And I wish you nothing but the best. Cheers, I'll see you in the next one.